Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to support session. Uh, in this one, we'll be talking about proposals. Um, uh, I said I'll be sharing some proposal secrets with you. Some of you might know this. Most of you don't know it. So I want you to pay attention to these things I'll be sharing. I was in a scale-up session yesterday with some of my students, and um, I was teaching them how clients view your proposals. Uh, we saw some things. Uh, some I have seen them for the first time. I'm always open to learning. I'm not a master. I'm a student. I learn. So I saw that for the first time. Someone told me he had seen it before me, and I'm like, wow, I mean, I'm seeing it for the first time. And I used to agree when I'm learning, because if you say you don't want to learn, the moment you, st you stop learning, you start dying. So I saw it. So what did I see? I saw that you can submit proposals and clients will not see that proposal. And I want you to pay attention to this. I'll go straight to the point. I'll ensure that I, I, I give you the best value based on the things I said I was going to talk about. Then I'll also answer your questions pertaining to proposals. So today is just majorly proposals. Um, if you have other questions, you can ask them, but I would be focusing more on proposals, proposal questions in the Q&A section. Now, first off, I want to show you how clients view your proposals. So yesterday we posted a job and I would like someone with PC to go and help us search for the job. Now the title of the job is email copywriter needed. I would like you to go, if you are with your PC, one of you here, I will stop sharing my screen, you'll be able to share. I want to use that job description to teach people. Then I will now show that same job description on a client's dashboard to also teach you. Now, I don't have the time to post a job like I did for my skill of students. I showed them what, but I will explain those things. I showed them what everything on your profile, how it affects your proposal. But I'm going to talk about those things. I might not be able to show you those process step by step, but I'll, I'll just run through them, you know, that's the difference between scale up and, and cost. That's by the way. Now, um, I like someone to go to just search for job, go to the search and search for, just type in email copywriters needed. The job was posted yesterday. Um, so that means the job was posted one day ago. Job was posted one day ago. So email copywriter needed. Wow, 23 new proposals. So email copywriter needed for a project. If you've done that, let me know so I can allow you to share your screen. Now, I'm doing this so I don't want you to see it from my point of view. I want you to see it from a freelancer's point of view first. Then I'll now show you the client's point of view. So, yeah. Please, if you have, if you have just, you can type it in the chat that you've searched. Then I'll allow you to share your screen. I allow you to share your screen. Search, okay, Sheriff. Sheriff, I've done that. Let me. So, Sheriff, please, you can share your screen. Please share your screen, Sheriff. So, I like you to. I like that job was posted yesterday, you know, by me. And I just want. I want. I want to use as a client because I'm a client. I want to use that client that job description to explain what jobs look like, then we're not going to, no, so it's not this one. This one is called email copywriter. Email copywriter, so you need to scroll down. So scroll down, email copywriter, yes, this one. This one, yes. Yes, this one. So like, like please, I can you guys see this job? This job was posted yesterday, 22 hours ago. And uh, as you can see, it's a fixed price job, right? Um, It was, you know, 12 connects, right? Clients, you know. And um, as you can see, client details, you know, I'm, I'm joking. That's why you can see that most times I used to tell you to always check client details. I was using this as a learning curve, but I wanted to scroll up and see something. So this was an email copywriter job, and it was my student that gave the title. I just told them to name anything so that we use it. I will use it to teach them. So they were the one that gave all this description. Then I wanted to scroll down. First of all, I was asked if it's going to be a contract to hire a job opportunity. I said yes. But I wanted to scroll down and see something. Now, if you can see these skills and expertise needed for the job. So we selected, say, 
this one, that one, copywriting, sales, copywriting, blah, 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 email copywriting. So we selected all these skills. And I want you to pay attention to this thing I'm saying now, that what we selected. We selected all these sales copy, copywriting now. Now, why am I telling you this? Remember that when you are writing, when you are making your profile, I used to tell you that, ensure that you fill up your skills section. That, if you notice, I used to tell you to fill up your skills section. Now, how does it affect you? When your skills don't match the skills of the job you are looking for, so if you don't pay attention to your skills, it's going to tell on your proposals. And I'm going to show you, you will see it. So proposals, 20 to 50 people have applied. As of yesterday, it was just 10 people, 10 to 15. So today is 20 to 50 people. Scroll down. Um, That's all everything about it. So yeah, so this is the job description. I hope you guys saw this. This is the job description. So you can stop sharing. Let me now show you that same job from a client's point of view. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want you guys to pay attention very, very well. So this is what a client's dashboard looks like. I hope you guys can see my screen. If you can see my screen, you can put it in the chat. I can see my screen. Yes, you can see my screen. Thank you. Everybody can see my screen, right? Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, this is what a client dashboard looks like. So when a client posts a job for you, this is where they see things. This is where they see. As you can see, this was a job posted yesterday and it was telling the client that, client to, you have 23 new proposals, right? Remember, I'm the client. Then, this is, if a client wants to post a job, let me just run through this. I'm not going to run through it full, but I'll just show you. If a client wants to post a job, this is what it looks like. You click the client, you click on the job. They will ask the client if it's a short term or a long term work. If you notice all those things you used to see on the job, short term, long term, then a client, I'm not going to run through this, ASAP, but tie to. Now, one thing is this. Let me just quickly add this one. One thing is this. If you notice, there's no tie to here now. I would like anybody, I would like someone in the chat to drop a title of a job for me. Anybody, first come, first up. I'll post it and you will see what will happen. So that I can quickly give you the learning, the things, the, the more things I want to learn there. If you quickly post a job title, any skills, okay, accountants needed. That was the first, I said first come, first up. So look at this. As I type in accountant needed for a project. Can you guys see what happened? Can you guys see what happened? How this specialization started changing? So this is where a client can select specialized um, category. Sorry, not specialization. A client can select category here and automatically their AI gives you, let me use another example. I think I saw another one, social media needed. So let's just do, let's change this. Let's do social media needed. Social media, let me see, manager needed. Can you see what is, you know, can you see the category that just pops up? Social media marketing, social media strategy, general virtual assistant. Can you see what pops up when it comes to... Now, when you are doing all this, you are using all this to have an idea of... If you are looking for social media manager work, your category should fall under this category, right? That's what it says. Let's do another one. I saw someone typing copywriter needed. Copywriter. Oh, w is thing that I said like today. So copywriter needed... Copywriter needed for a job. I like you to see this again. Inside this, copywriter, sales and marketing, copywriting, content writing, creative writing. Then a the client can select categories themselves and say, I don't want sales and marketing categories. I want sales copywriting. Apply. Now, what does this do? This is, you know, I teach you guys to always search by categories and by keyword. This is how search by categories used to align. This is how they, they, they move to categories. Search by categories this is how they used to move. Then skills. Let me quickly teach you this one too. Then skills, because it, you guys will understand now. Skills, okay, for the copywriting job. Now, if I'm posting this copywriting job, a job, the, uh, the algorithm is telling me, what are the main skills I need? So I say, I need a copywriter. I need someone that can do content writing. Maybe I need someone that can do headline. 
I scroll down industry. I need someone in maybe let's do something else. Fashion, health and fitness, um, deliverables. I need someone that can do. Uh, maybe I need someone that can do sales copy. Sales copy. You guys will see. You see. You see where these things I'm doing. You see where it's where you will see the importance. So I need someone that can do maybe sales writing or direct sales. Then I need someone that can do maybe mm, let's do sales funnel copywriting. And that should be ten already. That will be ten. So let's do. One, let's look for it. Let's make it ten. Let's make it ten in in, in copywriting. Let's see more again. I need someone that can do video sales data. Now it's already 10, right? As you can see. So all these things, all these notice, I want you to pay attention to everything listed here, all these things. So scope, this is where you now talk, talk about the, how long is, is it going to be more than six months? Is it going to be less than six months? Now, let me tell you what this does. One to three months, three to six months, more than six months. This is what affects connect. This is what affects connect. Well, most times, like nine out of 10 times, when you select more than six months, it's going to be 16 connect. When a client selects, and sometimes the client can select one to three months, and at the end, the job is going to be more than that. So this one, when you select one to three months, it's going to be most likely eight to 12 connect. But depending on also on the budget, then what level of experience will you need? See, as you can see, this won't restrict any proposals. I've had people that have asked me questions, hey, I'm entry level. Can I apply for an expert job? But can you see? This won't restrict any proposal, but helps match expertise to your budget. So entry level, someone who is new, intermediate, substantial expert. But I've told you always to go and select expert. The expert is subjective. But I want to quickly show you all those things, but that was not that's not why I'm here. I just want to show you. The reason I'm here is just to show. I want to just go to his proposals. Now, the job I the job I posted yesterday, as you can see, is telling me that I have. 23 new proposals. So let's review proposals. I said I want to show you how your proposal looks like in a client's dashboard. So this is how the client looks. Now, I want Sheriff to do something for us. I want Sheriff to go back to that job and try to do as if he wants to apply. And he scrolls down to Boosted Connect to see the amount of people or the amount of Connect the first four people here use. Now, remember that when you boost your Connect, you will show here. When you boost your connect, you are going to show here. So you can see boosted, boosted. When you boost your connect, you will show. So, like, I want you to. So I want to I want Sheriff to show us. Let me stop sharing. I want Sheriff to go back to the job posts and share his screen. Try to do like he wants to apply for the job. Then, uh, show us the amount of connect these two people are using. So if you click on you click on apply now, you're not applying. Just click on apply now, and just scroll down. You have a lot of tabs, so it's going to make your system slow. So scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Now this is what I want you to see. That's this is good. Now this connect this job cost twelve connect. As you can see, some people are using 30, 25, 22, 21. So these are the people that have used, you know, they've used the highest number of connects. Yesterday, some people used 13, 12, and 13, 20, and they were in the top four before. But right now, they've been bumped out. But these are the top four people, right? 30, 25, 22, 21. So let's go back, back to the job. So this is good. I want you to see so that when you submit, with when you boost your connect, so you can stop sharing. When you boost your connect, that's what used to happen. Um, I hope you can see that. Now, let's go back to the job description. Let me show you. Now, let me show you the job. So, back to the job description. I believe you can see my screen. As you can see, the guys that boosted their connect. Now, this job is a $500 job, the $500 contract. The guys that boosted their job, you can see him is the top. He's at the top of the place. Now, this other guy from Nigeria also boosted his job, even though his profile is something else. Now, I want you to pay attention to people that are boosting. See your competition. That's the first lesson I want to show you. To tell you that sometimes it's not by... So all these, there are lessons I want you to learn from this. Number one, it's not by boosting. Yes, boosting is good. It's a strategy, and I'm going to teach you how to do that. But you need to understand that the people you are competing with that are boosted, 
that they boosted does not mean the client will hire them. So will I, as a client, hire this person, see his profile, and see he's a, he's a writer? I'm not discriminating him. He can be from anywhere. But look at his profile picture. Can you can you make a comment about his profile picture? No. Let me allow you people to talk. It should not be on limit. Can you make a comment about his... Com what, what do you notice about his profile picture? Um, I feel like it's not professional. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Thank you very, much. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Now, so... Someone who did not use a professional picture is boosting their pro their proposal. Now, the point I'm trying to make to you guys is that I've seen some people complain that ah, they boosted a lot on this job. I don't know if the client will, you don't get. I'm trying to tell you that that they boost does not mean they will be hired. That's the point I'm trying to pass across. across. That they boost, I hope you can hear that again. That they boost their job does not mean that they will be hired. Because, see, the person that boosted is, or I don't before if i'm going to share this everything on youtube i'm going to ensure that i blow out all their names and their so that because you guys here that's why i'm showing you they're my people here but for the recording maybe i'll need to blow out the whole i need to blow out the whole you know we need to make them anonymous because i don't want anybody to sue me now but now are, are you guys paying attention to this now that this person boosts does not mean that they are the, they will decline to hire them. So have that at the back of your mind when you are dealing with boosted connects, you know. So have that at the back of your mind. That's number one lesson. Now, number two lesson. Number two lesson. <laughs> they say it's giving Pablo. Uh, yesterday, we saw something. And I'm going to show you guys. Let me show you guys what we saw yesterday. Now, yesterday we saw this other proposals. Now, out of these other proposals, let me tell you something about these other proposals. Out of these other proposals, this guy here, even though I don't like his profile picture too, this guy here was number, this guy here was number, was the third person to apply for this job. Can you guys see where his proposal is? Are you guys, please, I want you to have yes. you can talk small, small. Yes, but we what, can. Do you, what, what can you say about where his proposal is right now? It's at the bottom. He was the game. third person, he was the third person to apply for the job. Right. I know him. He was the third person. I was still telling you the first person to apply for the job. One of my students that applied for the job. He was the first person to apply for the I'll show you where his own proposal is. So this guy was the third person to apply for the job, but his proposal just went down to other proposals because, you know, the profile is not good enough. Let me just tell you the secret. This is why when you come to me and you say your proposals, you're applying for jobs, you're not getting jobs. Why do you think I used to ask for your profile first? Now, this is why. I'm showing you why. Sometimes you don't know. You just notice that when you come to me, if you notice, you come to me and you'll be like, oh, um, go. Oh, um, I'm not. I'm submitting job. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. All of the, the first thing I ask you is share your profile. Let me see. I don't ask you to share your proposal proposal with me. Do you know or do you notice? I don't ask you to share your proposal with me. I tell you share your profile first. Let me see. Now because your profile affects where your proposal is going to be, as you can see here. This guy's profile is not good enough. I don't even. We can. We can even click on it. But because we click on it now, it's going to be viewed. Now, but this guy's profile is not good enough. English is fluent, but his profile is just straight off. As you can see, his skills, just five, one, two, three, four, five, six skills. I remember what I told you about ensuring that you fill up your skills. Um, in his profile, there's no portfolio on his profile. It's, these are the only things on his profile. His overview, no specialized profile, his overview, and some skills. That's all. You guys know employment history on his profile. You see where the you see where Upwork threw him through his proposal too. Hey guys, yes. yes, yes, I can see that. Yes, that's number one. Then the next lesson is this: the first person to apply for this job. Let me show you the first person to apply for this job. The first person to apply for this job is this. 
this is a, this is the first person to apply for this job. Can you guys see where his proposal is? Yes. Can you see that it's not by? I hope you are taking this in. It's not by. It's not by how fast. Because some people will be like, "Oh, I want to be the first person to apply." Ah, they just posted this job one minute ago. I want to be first to apply. Are you guys? Are you guys learning? Yes, boss. Now, yes, sir. He was the first person to apply for this job because of the session we we're having. I was teaching him some things, but can you guys see where his proposal is currently? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. now, one of the things is this: is that boosted, boosted, uh, boosted proposal, boosted business works, but you have to be strategic with it. That's another lesson you should know. Boosted this thing works, but you can't, you know, it's, it's going to cost you more connect and you can't be breaking the bank because of boosted connect. So you have to be strategic when you are using your boosted connect. So yes, it works. Don't be like someone that uses boosted connect and every other thing about the profile does not qualify. This person at least qualifies. Now, so there's another thing I want you guys to, I want to teach you guys. It's called best match. best match now most of you for you to be best match for a job the skills on your profile everything on your profile needs to align with the job description or the kind of job you apply for that's why i used to teach you to say i tell you that you can't say okay i mean let me use an example that comes to my head i'm a copywriter for example now but i have digital marketing skills i want to be applying for digital marketing jobs why do you think i used to tell you guys to go and create a specialized profile for that digital marketing before you apply for it this is the reason. So that you become best match. Because that's, you have a copywriting profile, it will make you a best match for a digital marketing job, even though you have the skills. But if you have a copywriting profile, you have a digital marketing specialized profile, and you're applying for a digital marketing job with your digital marketing specialized profile, fully optimized, you, you have a high chance of becoming a best match for the job. If you have the right skills listed on your profile and, you know, portfolio, everything is on your profile. I hope you are learning. Yes, sir. Are, are you guys learning? Yes. Yes, sir. We are learning. Let me teach Absolutely. another thing. Two yes, things sir. I want to teach Very you. much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Two things I want to teach you. Now, remember what I say about the first thing a client see on your proposals. Do you all remember that? Yes. What's the that? First, the first paragraph. The first I, paragraph. That's the overview, your profile overview. No, not even profile paragraph. overview. The first paragraph of your proposals. That will be the hook, the hook of your proposal. Okay, so can you guys, hook. yes. Can you guys see okay. what a client is seeing? I've not clicked anybody's proposals. So let's say I'm a client. I want to hire people. And I'm scrolling through their proposals to see the one that will cast my attention. But can you guys see, can you see what, what is giving me? I see a lot of top rated people. So can you guys see? So yes, yeah. So you can see what it's giving me. So the first, the first two lines, the first book on your proposal is what a client. So you notice this is why I used to tell you guys to not waste that real estate to be saying stories that touch. If you want to say stories that touch, make it in the middle or going to the end of your proposal. At least they've opened your proposal already. So this is for people that will complain that. Um, I'm submitting proposals. They are not viewing it. They are not viewing it because you are not using the right hook. Do you get that line? Yes. They are not viewing your proposal because your hook is not attractive enough. So when you are applying for jobs, remember this real estate. Each time you submit a proposal, tailor it to the job, but remember that real estate that that client will see. And let's click on the proposal. Let's click on someone's proposals. Let's click on someone's proposal. This guy, I'm clicking his proposal because he's one of the best, best, best match. Now other people are best match already. So now let me tell you. Now when a client click on your proposal, let me tell you what they will see. Let me tell you what they will see. A client, let's we click on this guy's proposals. This is what his proposal is. So can you see the other things on his proposals? Let's go back to his, it, it again. You are calling me and I'm here to deliver. Let's get started. The only thing I need to do is ask you a few questions about your target audience and how warm your list is. If they're high school, we're not selling to them unless... This guy tailored towards 
I like this guy's proposal. Tailored towards the job description, even though it was just a vague job description. But I like his proposal. I like the proposal. Now, um, he even added portfolio. But like now, this is what your cover letter looks like to the clients. I want you to imagine all those proposals you used to submit. This is what used to happen. So this is what the cover letter looks like to the clients. Your proposal, this is what it looks like to the clients. Now, the next thing I want to show you is then your profile is at the bottom. Can you see? Yes. So why do you now, you do now see why I'm always particular about your profile? Because it works with your proposal. If you have a bad profile, it's going to hurt you a lot of times. But at least you should, you know, have a good profile and have a good proposal. So when you submit a proposal, depending on the profile you use, the client will see your proposal first. The client will see your proposal first, then the client will see your profile. And everything on your profile, the client will see. Now, I was telling them yesterday, ensure that this portfolio place, your first three portfolios, ensure that they are your best portfolios because that's what the client will see. That's what I was telling my student yesterday. Your skills, remember what I said about skills? Look at what this guy's skills is. You know, he ensured that all his skills are tailored to us. That's why it's best match. Then another thing is he completed jobs in the niche too. Other experience, you know, there's a lot of keyword on his profile. I hope you are learning and you are going to be doing things differently next time. Yes. And so this is what it looks like when a client click on a job proposal. That when I want to hire then I click on this as a client. I just click on this. And if I like the proposal, maybe I want to be, I'm scanning through a lot of people and I want to check them out later. I click on this. So then it means that I have a list of people down maybe in the IR, um, list name, potential, freelancers. So I just, for the sake of this lesson, create this list. Now, the moment I save this person, See, when I save this person, that means he's going to enter the same way you save jobs. The freelancer will go there. So that means later, I can always see that freelancers in that list. So, so this is it. This is what it looks like on a client's board. See the job post. I can edit the post. I can remove the post. So when you see, when you get a message and this job has been removed, this is it. Are you guys noticing now? Yes. I don't know if you've gotten any message. A job you submitted has been removed. Yes, I've gotten such. So this is what happens. Well, in such case, does the connect gets refunded? Most times it does. Okay. If the client removes the job posting by themselves, it does. Because you've used your connect, your connect to be refunded. If the client, because the other reasons a job can be removed. For those, some of them, it won't. Sometimes Upwork can flag the job. Depending, even when Upwork flags it, sometimes they return the connect. But some, there are some things that will happen. So yeah, so you can make the job private. That means you want to invite people. You can, you know, edit the post of the job. Then, so I can, you can also invite freelancers. You get a list of people that you can invite. Now, this is what boosted profile looks like so for people that boosted their profile they will be on the top you know for those who are spending on boosted profile they'll be on the top now this is another thing i want you to see um completed 32 because of the job is you know there was sales writing in the job there's some description that will be added to your profile especially when you are completing jobs related to your niches you're going to be seeing them as a client or the client will be seeing them among the top 50 sales writing freelancers on upwork um, completed 64 email marketing job as seven relevant skills to your job. This is another thing I want you guys to, I want, I want you guys to notice. As you can see, as seven relevant skills to your job. It means that the skills on their profile, because of the job I wanted to post, because I wrote all these skills and it's also on their own profile. So they are telling me, the algorithm is telling me that it's relevant. So what the point I'm trying to, or the lesson is this, in this behind this, the lesson is this. Make sure that on your profile, there are relevant skills related to the jobs you want to be applying for. That's just the lesson from this relevant skills. 
And the moment you start completing jobs related to the niche, see this Nigerian. Let's check our profile. The moment you start completing job related to the niche, you start getting, she has made 10K. She should be top rated very soon. If not, oh, she's top rated. She has made 10K. She, you know, she has a good profile. But she should change these hours per week. This thing used to also affect. But you should change that. So yeah, but you can see her portfolio, everything on her profile. Her profile. Can see. Please change it to what? Sorry, sir. More than 30 hours per week. I've always shouted that multiple times. As needed, it's not okay. No, as needed is not okay. So let me tell you what happened. Is this when 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 they were creating upwork? When they were creating upwork, um, as needed means this as needed. It means if you look at the ranking, go and check the ranking. You would see more than thirty hours, less than thirty hours. Then you now see as needed, right? When they were creating upwork, for those of us that have skipped joined upwork around that twenty fifteen time, when they were creating upwork, as needed means that as at that time they explained it. Then as needed means that you are busy. And um, if the job is available, you can do it, but you are busy. Open. That's why if you, if you see, if you are needed and you are open to offers, that's what as needed means. So see, that's why I used to tell you guys, don't, don't put as needed. Always put more than 30 hours. And if you are busy too much, you can put less than 30 hours. Well, don't put as needed unless you are busy and you are not interested. As needed, most times, as needed is going to be, it means that you're only available for maybe invite only jobs. And you know, it's just it's it's not for you that you are looking for job. If you are looking for job on a big scale, if you are very busy, if you, if you get a lot of job, you are top rated, top rated plus, and plenty invites, then they will tell you to they will advise you to change your availability. I don't know if you've gotten that. Maybe any busy person here has gotten that before. That they will send you invite. Maybe you are not available. They will tell you to change your availability. Or maybe you've not. You've no, it's just when I when I accept. Uh... When I accept a new contract, they say remember to change your availability time. Yes, they do that nowadays. Yeah, that's true. They also do that now. Nah, but yes, when you when you when you hey, so that's on your availability. But sometimes in invite, the one I was even talking about is when you decline invite too much. Let's say you start declining invites, they will tell you to change your availability. Now it means that put it to that the invites we are sending you is because we saw more than thirty hours per week availability. Now you need to change it to as needed. So it means that as needed is not going to give you more invites. I don't know if you get that point. But that's what they are trying to see. Like when you get, and also applies to, to, to getting a contract, as you've just mentioned. That one, they do that once in a while. And they say, okay, when you've gotten your contract, change your availability. They are telling you to remove it from that more than 30 hours because of the algorithm. Because you know, as much as much as possible, Oprah wants to make money and they don't want to be sending invites to people that are busy. They want to they want the client to spend their money. But that's just the point. I hope you all got you got that point. So that's yeah. that's what this that's what this is. Then, if a client wants to invite people to job, this is where they click on the invites depending on the profile. Then, the one that I saved from the proposal the other time, you can see this is where it shows. So that's where freelancers invite used to see. This is the job post. This is the oh, of course invite freelancers for the job. And this is the review proposal. This is where clients review their, your proposal, all those proposals that you submit. I love this proposal. I love this person. Because this person boosted, they boosted their job, but they're also a best match. So any which way, they will be at the top, top, no matter what. Because they are a best match and they also boosted their job. So if you are, if, you, if this is one of the places you want to be. So yes, you can use Boosted Connect once in a while. If, or if you have money, just be strategic with using it. But also ensure that you are a best match for the job because you don't want to be like people that they boosted their job, but they look like someone that will run away with the client's money. Yeah. So this is what it looks like. I don't know if you have any questions. This is what you're, when you submit proposals, this is what it looks like in the client's dashboard. Um, your hook, your profile, your skills. Then for those whose profile are not hundred percent, or those who don't put um this one too was part of the first set of people that this guy was part of the first set of people he, he, this guy was boosted before if you notice uh -huh, let me answer your question let me answer this question you did not ask me this guy was boosted before he was number two boosted as at yesterday and um
this guy was number two boosted yesterday. And as you can see right now, he's not in the top boosted. He's been ranked down. And this is what happens when some people will say, be like, okay, what if I use a boosted connect and I know I'm no, I'm no longer in the top four? What happens? So this is what happens. So this guy was formerly number two yesterday, was boosted, but I think he used 13 connect to boost. The job was 12 connect. So that's, you know, if you check that four, the four ranking that you saw that Sh Sh Sherif showed us, the lowest was 61. Uh, I guess it's, lowest was 21. So that's why this guy has now been, you know, he's, he has gone back to organic. So according to organic, even though he was the second person, he was like the second number, yeah, number the third person to apply for the job or the fourth person was like between the second and fourth person to apply for the job. But you look at where his proposal is. See the amount of proposals ahead of his proposals, even those that you know his boosted connect. Yeah, so questions, please. If you have questions, I'll take your questions now. Uh, before you continue, will the will the connect be refunded? Uh, if the client did not click your job, if there's no interaction, because according to the rules of boosted connect, if the client did not interact with your proposals, even though you boosted them, then you would, uh, if the client did not interact, then you would it would be informed then. But if if I had clicked on his job, if I had clicked on his proposal yesterday, he, he wouldn't be refunded, even though he's no longer in the top four. There's that that disclaimer is in that. If, I don't know if you guys read it, so me I took time to read it because Oppo can be very funny. They will tell it's the day it happens, and maybe the day you start complaining, they will tell you you did not read our terms and conditions. So me, I used to pay attention to it. A lot of proposals stood out to me because you know basically, um, a lot of proposals stood out to me. I'm going to answer that one too. A lot of proposals stood out to me because of their hook. Um, the reason I clicked this guy was no, he was is a best match. So that means whether I like it or not, best match clients will pay attention to best match once in a while. Then the hook also clicked to me because in my in the job post, I want you to read the job post. So this one stood out to me a little, but let me show you why it stood out. Compare, let's do let's view the job post. Now, this job post said, Rachel, this is answering your question. The job post said, I'm looking for an email copywriter for my project. They'll be delivering copies for our newsletter subscribers, right? We are planning to launch our course. We want to make sales. The selected candidate will deliver five copies per week. Must be persuasive. Apply if this is you. Now, let's go back to this guy's proposal. Remember that I want to make sales. That's my pain point. I want to make sales. And in this hook, you know, he might not be the best person because there are a lot of super, super people. But why it stood out to me is maybe because he's part of the first set of people that applied. And I, so I already know his name from yesterday, but he was like, okay, let's go. The only thing I need to ask you is this, the target audience. I want my list is. So this guy is already asking me, like, you don't, uh, he's already, see, they, if they are high school, we are not selling to them. So can you see what this, can you see the strategy? You know, there are different ways to write proposals, but can you see the strategy this guy used? Like he already made me, how would I put it? He made me emotional or he, he, he triggered, he pressed my emotional trigger. That's what I'll put it because I'm also learning copywriting. I'm not a full-time copywriter yet. I'm learning copywriting. But he pushed emotional trigger in the sense that he said, he's already talking about the job because I said I want to sell to my newsletter subscribers. And this guy is telling me, so how warm is my list? That means he's asking me because he already knows. So he more like he understands the assignment. So it's like, if they are code, we are not selling to them unless you are you want a high. Then I want to click more. I want to read, right? I'm interested in reading more. So unless you want a high unsubscribe rate, can you see? Once they are warm, we can sell to them. I'll do the deep research, provide information, simple as that. You interested? Check out my portfolio. You know you get. Then you also added this portfolio. Look forward to what you have to say. See ya. Can you see? So that's why I stood out. I know if I check others too, we're going to see some other ones that stood out or that stands out. Well, that's, that one stood out a little. You saw the job post. <laughs> Thank God you did not apply. <laughs> well, if you had applied, you would have seen your, we have seen you outside. We have seen your proposal, we have seen your profile, we have spotted the mistakes you make for jobs. So if you had applied, it would have been good for you. We will just use you as a case study. Um, 
are there any strategies to make your profile to get more invites? See, the strategies include have a fully optimized profile that is targeted towards um or your the job you are applying for. Like I remember when I used to teach you that your 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 profile speaks for you when you are not there. So make it fully optimized, make it 100% optimized, fill up your skills, fill up your employment history, fill up your portfolios, fill up, use the right keywords, your overview, catchy, add specialized profiles, you know, add video introduction if you can. If you, that one is not important, but, you know, it boosts your profile too to an extent. If you do, but well, it's not important in quotes, but it's just, it's just a nice extra. And if you add it, it's not, it doesn't do you no harm. Then when your profile is fully optimized, when you start applying for jobs, at least applying for the right jobs, you you would you give you get you increase your chance to get invites. And the moment you start, let's even say you're applying for jobs, you're not getting invites. The moment you start getting, say, the first interview, the second interview, and you maybe even get the first job, the algorithm would want to give you more invites. The algorithm want to push your profile to get more hits because you're telling the algorithm that you're you are, you are getting success on the platform. And that's the way the algorithm works. That's the answer to your question. You apply for this particular job. Ah, where's your profile? Do I need? Do I need? Yes, it's advice. You need to sakina. You need to put your portfolio in your own proposal. Now, the Upwork created the, the opportunity. I don't know if you've attended the session or you saw it. There's a new thing on Upwork now. If you're applying for jobs, where, where? Okay, I'll look for it. There's a new thing on, uh, right now where you can where you can add your portfolio on an Upwork profile to a... Okay, I'll check for it. There's a new thing on Upwork now where you can add the portfolio on your Upwork profile to a proposal. You can even add um, certification to a proposal. You can add a lot of things. I didn't see your question. So you can add a lot of things on your on your proposal. So, um, yeah. But please, mm -hmm. portfolio mm -hmm. is very, very important. Please, I'm, I'm answering questions. I will answer. I will take you. I will, I will take voice. I'm answering chat questions first. Um, so we don't mix it up. I'll take voice, please. Um, yeah. So you do, I don't know if I pronounce your name well. I'm sorry if I butcher it. Do I need maybe you give me the pronunciation? Maybe you could you give me send me voice note and you pronounce your name. Um, so let's look for your proposal. Maybe you can tell me what when you applied for it, how many jobs did you see? But well, let's look for you. And if you see, let's let's look for your proposal. Let's scroll down to look for your proposal. Yeah, this is you. This is you. We can see. Hello, I've read through your job posts, requesting an experience. We can send to your new right. I That's believe right. that with my copywriting skills. Please, I'll answer voice questions later. I'm coming. I believe that with my copywriting skills, I can help you achieve your desired results. So this is good or can be better. Now, I want you to understand that this... This zero dollar hand does not mean anything. Like it does not is is not a factor, so to say. If you can, if you can prove that you can do the job, you will get hired. Now, because I've done it multiple times with zero dollar account, and I've gotten jobs instantly with zero dollar account. And we have plenty of people here who started at zero and they've gotten jobs. And everybody you see here that is at hundred k or two hundred k or fifty k or ten k, five k started at zero. So zero is not a problem. Don't use that to limit your belief. Now, this is good. These are a good intro, but it can be better. Sales different copywriter, meaning that you can target it towards the job. So it's good. It's okay. Um, so let's look at the proposals in full. Okay, there's no portfolio. You do not have any portfolio. So that's the that's 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 a I'm available for a chart, two years experience writing this. So you don't have portfolio. And so I want you to compare your proposal to that guy's proposal. You know, you're in the copywriting space. I would, we'll go back to that guy's proposal again. We'll see which one is more persuasive. So what are the things you can pick from his proposals? You know, even he too, there are things he can do better. Trust me, I'm not an expert. I'm not perfect. But it's just that, you know, I have plenty of students to say that at least I know what I'm saying. Now, uh, your proposal is good, but can be better. And... It's bad in the sense that you've not had portfolio. You've not had a sample. And that one is bad. That's, that's, I give you, I give you fail mark for that one. I'm not going to bother you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to make you happy. But let's look at your, your profile. So change your English 
please change this English this thing to native. Change this specialization, remove it from others. Other sales and there's sales copywriting, there's marketing copywriting. So emotional response copywriter should be maybe under sales market sales copywriting. Change the specialization. Um, there's a difference between thirty dollar per hour, fifteen dollar per hour. Maybe you just change your hourly rate on this one to sell to fifteen dollar per hour. When you get your first job, you increase it to your thirty dollar per hour. Add more portfolio. Add more portfolio. I wrote an ad, brought thirty others. Um, or maybe this the ad I wrote brought in. You know, you're a copywriter. See me. I'm also learning copywriting and there are some things that you need to learn. So look at this headline. I need, I have a book. I have a book, ebook on headlines. Please buzz me on WhatsApp. Let me send. I have like two, three of them on headlines. Let me send it to you. There's one on the Sugar Man's book on headlines too. I'm learning, even though I've not read that book Finish. Now, I want you to compare these two headlines. The ad I wrote brought in 30 others in two days. This ad brought in 30 others in two days. Compare the two headlines. Do you, do you like you want to be you want to be active you want to push you want to you want to like try to you want to hammer you want to hammer on it see this hard brought in 30 others in two days or this hard delivered 30 others in two days but look at this compare it to how soft this is the hard i wrote we know you wrote it so do you get i'm you know i'm just giving you this positive critique so that you can you know get better um then add more portfolios please then your skills is good i like it yeah so just ensure that your skills are tailored towards the job you want to apply for social media employment industry is this is very is good um make sure you add more like in this employment history i like one or two lines talking about some of the things you did or results you got for them please i would like you to add that to the to, to your employment history it can be a paragraph it can be two lines explaining that then your profile then I remember to change this I like it I like your title emotional response ah emotional response and persuasive copywriter I'm looking at that emotional response oh let's, let's just leave it at emotional response copywriter is good it's, 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 it's them I want something SEO content writer email marketing so you need to create a profile for email marketing or uh, there should be a profile for email marketing or SEO content because right now you have three three things on your profile. You have a copywriting, you have SEO content, you have email marketing. Now, if you look at the lessons of what I've taught you guys now, you will realize that your profile is, you know, at least good for copywriting, but it's not perfect for content and email in a sense. You know, it can even can even work for content because content is similar or is on the line of copy, but email marketing needs its standalone specialized profile. Email marketing expert. So that it needs a standalone specialized profile. So I hope you took notes. Well, this is recorded. So maybe when I start, when, I, when I'm able to edit the pictures, I will need someone, a video editor to help me edit all the pictures. I don't want anybody's there. I will just edit the pictures and the names of everybody to make them anonymous when we are like, but the video is recorded. When he, when, when, we are, when he's able to, when it is edited, Sha, you get the recording. But I hope you wrote notes. I hope you took notes for the things that you can do better. Now, let's go back to that, guys. Um, I will check other proposals that stand out because it's not the only proposal that is good. The other, we can learn from other proposal. But you can, I want you to look at this guy's proposal as from a copywriter's point of view. If you read, I want you to read this proposal, compare it to what you wrote yourself. So can you see how, can you see how persuasive he tried to be? So for a copywriter, for example, you can be persuasive in your, in your copy, in your proposal writing. Now, using persuasion or using some strategies, when it comes to some niches, say you're a business writer, you don't need to start sounding like a copywriter because he looks, he's a, I'm not, I'm just using it for this example now, but he likes, he's looking, he's like a serious niche. So at least you should be professional, even in your copyright, in your cover letter slash proposal. But as a copywriter, you can, you can go a little bit informal. Because, you know, it's copywriting now and you want to sell. And this guy is trying to sell me because I want to also sell. Looking at the job post we posted. Now, you can see what he did. See the way, see the way, see the way he did it. See the, I want you to look at his tone. I want you to look at, I might copy this. Let me copy this. I'll copy his proposal and send it to you. I'll copy his proposal, I'll send it to you. So please buzz me 
Okay, I said I wanted to send you headlines. So buzz me for that. Please remind me. There's a lot of messages. But buzz me for that and I'll try and copy his proposal and send to you. I don't want to keep maybe after the session, I'll open my I'll open my Chrome it to slow down mine because a lot of tabs and plenty of things are working on the system. So I'll send that to you. Yeah, plenty, plenty of things. I know there are more questions. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Ah, Oiba Meji, so what's now the point of applying early since there's all these boosted and best match? That's a very good question, Olu Yeah, that's a very good question. The point of applying early is that um, some clients will not wait till 24 hours like I waited before I hired. Some people need to hire ASAP, so they will hire early, right, in hours. That's why sometimes some of you will notice that you submitted a proposal before that you got a reply, you got a reply instantly, or you got the reply in hours. So that's the point of applying early. Not all clients will wait 24 hours to apply, to, to reply. One. And what's the point of being best match? Why can't you be the best match? Or, you know, even though if you can't do boosted connect, if you can't use boosted connect, because you need to be strategic. Now, I need to understand that, the game is the game, and you need to play the game. If they change the game, you is you to you find your own advantage. If you get you're competing with other freelancers. Everybody is trying to collect the money of the client. The question is, why Why not you? So why not with Boosted Connect? So if you don't have, maybe you are a newbie, you don't have Boosted Connect, you can't afford Boosted Connect. That's not bad. That's fine. But why not you in the best match? Why not you having a profile that is optimized, tailored towards the job and you become the best match? So why not you? You know, so that's the point of applying early. Um, let me see more questions. Uh, let me see. Coming, is it advisable to use a recommended lens on profile picture? Why not? You can use a lens on. You can use a picture. You just make it professional. So that's your question. You, you, I saw the question before. Um. Yeah. Um. Uh -huh, yeah. There's a lot of eye high in your proposal. Now, now that eye, that thing there is fifty fifty. Sometimes it works because especially when. It is tailored towards the job description. So I've used, if you notice one of my proposal templates, now I, I know this rule of high, that I should not be using I, I too much. So I'm always conscious of it when I'm writing. Sometimes when I want to write, I will deliver, I will change it to you get, when I see that there's plenty high in my proposal. Because this thing too is, is you know, I learned it one of the, in one of the proposal sessions I attended. But if you notice some of, there are some proposals that you would, you wouldn't be able to avoid that I. So you leave it like that. But if you can avoid it, avoid it. But if you can't, leave it like that, but ensure that it's rock solid. So I like Obafemi's response to that, your eye, eye. Because when we check, I want to, I want to look for another proposal that is, that is cool enough so we can also compare and would we'll see that like you see that, you know, you should ask yourself, why are these proposals standing out? And you should, you know, look at those proposals, study it and see how you two you can duplicate. You notice that uh, Sam's proposal, I have 10 templates of some proposal in my in my phone. Maybe I should share that template again one of these days. Maybe today. I can do it this night safe. I have 10 templates of Sam's proposal. You guys know Sam proposal now. I have 10 people that have used it and have gotten jobs with it. And I believe Udoani also used this template. That was the template Sam did. Now the thing about Sam, that's why I even remembered Sam template. Sam template has a lot of high. Not a lot of, but he has high, you know. But maybe I'll go and check it again. But I can see that you you use some of his templates. Um, let me see what other questions again. Let me see what other questions again. Okay, no question again. I've answered your questions, so that's good. Um, yeah, is there anybody that wants to talk? I don't want to write. I just want to talk to ask question. If you want to talk, you can raise up your hand and let's talk. You can ask your question, then let's round this up. If there anybody that wants to talk to ask questions, if not, I believe that means I I, I believe I've answered all your questions. Now, um, let me see. I said some other things. Yep, yep. How clients see your proposals? I relate to your profile. Secret of boosted connect. Okay, yeah, I've mentioned everything. Messi wants to say something. Yeah, I use the templates. Okay, I got a job in twenty four hours. Yes, ahead. That's one of my templates. Yes. One of my templates, yes, uh -huh. one of, it has plenty high. So I checked it too. I realized, so that's why that, the problem is right with the high, but I now checked it that 
I'm going against that rule of using plenty AI. And now, if you the, that template is because of the clients. It was that particular client. Uh, I was trying to answer each of their questions in their, in their. No, you don't have to be put, top rated somewhere before you become best match. Anybody can be best match. Um, I was trying to answer those questions in that proposal. That was why he got he had a lot of high. Because even when I wrote it too, I was like, ah, there's plenty high here. So Mercy, please, you can unmute yourself. Okay. Yes, there are some job posts in which it will look like the client is actually talking to a particular person. Like sometimes they might even mention the person's name there. Is there advisable to apply for that kind of jobs? No. Okay. So the client in those times, when, when those kind of things happen, let me explain what is happening there. When those, let, me, let me show you what, what is happening is this. They are meant to make the job private. I hope you can see this. So the client made a mistake. Instead of making it private so that they can talk to that particular freelancer, they made it public, but they didn't know. But they are, you know, the, the freelancer will see it too, you get, or the freelancer will apply to it too, but that was that's the mistake. They are meant to make it private so that it's just going to be talking to that particular freelancer. So, you know, see, uh, the rules is this. Let me explain something to you. The rule is this. 99 out of 100 times don't don't follow because it's a job that the client already have someone they are talking to so 99 out of 100 times i want you guys to always follow my instructions but one out of 100 try your luck <laughs> i've seen things i've seen people that did not follow my instructions and they've gotten jobs one of my students still got a job where the location they are looking for people in the us or italy and she got the job in nigeria so trust me there are times when you should go against my instructions and it will work for you but most of the time, you can split it. Most of the time, please follow my instructions. If you don't want to do it 100%, do it 99%. Then the remaining one out of 100, then just play around and try your luck. But you, you know that when you are trying your luck, you are gambling. When you follow the instructions, you are, you are following a plan. So that's the idea. Any other question? Any other question? So I hope you guys have seen how our proposal looks like. Um, I believe you can now see it. Our proposal looks like um, last viewed by a client 31 minutes ago because I clicked on the job, as you can see. So if you can see last viewed, you know, between yesterday and today, I didn't view it. So last viewed by a client 31 minutes ago, that was when I engaged with the job last. So as you can see, that's what used to happen. So when, when, when last viewed is... The power of last video is when, when a client logged in and checked the job, maybe on their device, on their PC or anywhere. So that's, you can see that every action, every action that the client is doing and every action you two you do, it has a, a, an opposite reaction. Rachel, you have a question. Mercy, do you have another question? And your hand is raised again. Rachel, you have a question or meet your mic. Um. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, so the question is not entirely related to what we are saying here, but yes, it's still about freelancing in general. Okay, so I don't know if you remember, I think, was it early this year or May or March, uh, we had a call and I said um, I was in my comfort zone and I was booted out of my comfort zone, so I need to start looking for a job. And okay, I think then I was earning about 150 but however, I've actually been able to, you know, get apply on LinkedIn, although I've not had much success with Upwork, I won't lie. But then since then, I've, I'm have i almost a level two seller now on Fiverr since then. But now I want more. I'm not, I'm not satisfied with that anymore. I want more and I, I want, I still want to retry Upwork because I bought, um I bought Connect on Upwork. I bought Connect last two months. And the connect is still there, intact. So I lent to my same proposal. They don't view it. And even if they view it, they don't get back to me. What do I do? When you send proposal, and they do, that's if you notice now, this is the, this is what we are doing here. It's based on everything we just mentioned now. What we are doing here is based on everything you just mentioned now. It's based on, it's, it's similar to what is, it's in line or is in tune with everything we just discussed here now. You are writing proposals. You are not viewing it. It means I wrote, I think I wrote an article recently explaining it. When you are writing a proposal and they are not viewing it, it means that your hook is not good enough. 
It means you are not applying for the right jobs. It means that you need to work on your profile. It means that you need to work on your search process. So those are the factors involved. And I just showed you an example of what proposal looks like now, so you can see it physically. Yeah, rising proposal. So even when, when, by the time it gets viewed now, you're not getting interviews then. So let me tell, let me show you now. So let's go to Indo Anis example, for example. If I click on his pro proposal, let's go down and scroll and check his proposal. If I click on his proposal, which is this, it's also here, and I, I know I am, it means I view and I do not interview him, right? So that means that when it happens, I want you to picture it. When I click on the proposal and I do not interview him, it means that the proposal was not convincing enough. Because remember that, as you can see, I could check other proposals from other people. So if he, his proposal caught my eye, that means I will view it. So when a client's proposal catches your their eyes, and when your proposal catches a client's eye, that's when they view your proposal, right? But when they go into your proposal and it's not good enough, maybe they did not see portfolio, it's not convincing enough, or they see a proposal that is better than yours, then they compare and contract and they just... They just... Okay, sorry to cut short, but then I have a proposal, a, a, a um, portfolio. I have like four portfolio projects on my um Upwork. I have, I'm even considering um asking one of my clients from Fiverr to probably leave me a review on Upwork. I knew, I know you'd be happy to do that for me. I don't know if that can help me somehow. It's going to help you. You're just only going to help you a little. The work is in your hands. I've listed everything now that you need to do. And I've always been listing these same things. If you don't, if you don't do it then, if you don't do them, you won't see it's simple. Like I've said, I used to say this over and over, like, and I've said it now, and I I think I wrote an article about it some days ago. I think so. If you are not getting viewed, these are the things you are doing wrong. Like, this is how many years now, and it's yours. It's like there's no magic stroke, there's no magic, oh, abacadabra. Trust me. He has no ma is is if if you are not getting views, if you are not getting interviews, that's what you are doing wrong. That's what you need to correct. If you can, if you say you get portfolios on your profile, are you adding your portfolios? Are you adding your samples in your proposals? Are you applying for the right jobs? Is your you know are you are you checking the client details too? You know even if the job is right to you, what is the client details saying? Is it a client that the higher rate is ten percent, five percent, two percent? When you don't do all these things, you won't get jobs like. Say this over and over and over and over and over again. And, over. and that's, that's a very good question. How many proposals have you sent? How many proposals have you sent, Rachel? I've sent 25 and four was viewed. 25 in, 25 in a month. In a month. In a month. So it's in a month. It's Wait, you sent Wait, 25, you sent 25 right? Yes. And four was viewed. Yes. See, you just confirmed everything I've said. You just confirmed everything. Like I didn't I didn't know this figure or I didn't know this statistic before I mentioned what I said. Because in my head, I knew that was what you were doing wrong. But you just with the statistics you just gave me. That's why I like my stats. And maybe I'll just use my stats to conclude this session after I answer maybe one or two questions again. See, eh, your stats will tell you everything you need to know. And this stat you just gave me just told me what I needed to know. That if you submit 25 proposals, you are viewed four times. It means that you are applying for the wrong jobs. It means that you are applying for the wrong jobs with the wrong job activity with the wrong client details. That's what it, that's what that's what that figure, that's what that 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 uh, oh Dr. Steiner, you want to say something. That's what that figure is telling me, Rachel. 25 to 4. At least from your 25 proposals submitted, at least you should be getting half viewed. That's the ratio that tells you that, okay, you're in line. If you're not getting half views, and this goes to everybody, if you're not getting half or close to half viewed from your proposals, you're not doing it right. Yeah, so Dr. Stan, I want to say something. I would still continue with you, Rachel. Well, good evening, sir. Good evening. Okay, so uh, while we were discussing uh, the issue of skills, because from what I understand that you said in the beginning was that skills affect uh, the issue of best matches and all of that. So, you know, I, I, I decided to go through my profile. So I'll look at the skills that I had inserted. 
So I noticed uh, something that I don't know whether it um, may affect me. So I just wanted you to comment on it. So, you know, my profile has three, three profiles. I have um, one that talks about brochure, catalog, presentation, and PDF. The title is presentation design. Then we have, I had editorial design, talks about books, book formatting, Amazon KDP, Ingram Spark. And then the part that it says all work, I just used it to do a uh, general graphic design and uh, meet Johnny expert. So, um, so when I went to the skills for the one that, for example, the one that says editorial design, I discovered that I didn't even add like Amazon, KDP, even in Grams Parks among my, my skills or Canva, but it's in the general profile. So when I apply for a job with this particular profile that says editorial design, remember that in my general profile, it is there, but in the one I use in applying, that's the editorial design, it's not there. And that affects me because I was wondering if that may be a reason why I may have a lower um, view for proposal. Does it affect in terms mm. of best matches and well, all that? Well, so if, let me tell you something is this. There are some things that are, right. uh, there are some things that are important and there are some things that are necessary or I'm not calling it necessary, but they, they, are, they, are, they are more like an extra boost. Now, hmm. and for example, you already have the skill listed on your profile. So even though it is general profile, it still counts as a skill listed on your profile. Okay. So it's listed there, it's not going to be listed there. Now, best match gives you the opportunity yes, to get the job, gives you the best chance to get a job, but that does not still say you are going to be hired. Because even Upwork is only recommending to the client that you are the best match and it's going to catch the client's eye, right? And you want to be best match most of the times because you won't be best match all the time. Even if we type people on the profile, I will show you, you will realize that some people have all these things and they are still not best match. So you're asking yourself, so what now qualifies as best match? It does everything on your profile. Now, by the time you start completing, let's say you even start completing design jobs, for example, let's say you've completed two, three design jobs, graphic design, even though they are $5 jobs, $10 jobs. If you're applying for a graphic design job that is $1,000, you are a best match. Because the algorithm will say you've completed three graphic design jobs similar to that one thousand dollar job. Okay. It will at your skills, it will start looking at your completed jobs. So it's not as it's not as it's not just, it's, it's I won't say complicated, but I won't just say it's, it's dynamic. It's not just very static like that. The point is, you know, increase your chance of getting the best job. Have a very good profile, complete jobs, get good reviews because. All those things improves your chances of getting best match, getting interviews, getting all these things. Yeah. So as you've gone to your profile, you notice that some skills are not there. Just notice, just start putting those skills that are not there, so that next time it increases your chance. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So there's something that I was doing recently, yeah, for my that. job application. Um, I noticed that if I, I was, I was trying to play with, you know, different methods. So I started writing on my first line, find attached, maybe find attached um, sample of what I did for a similar job. And then I noticed that that find attached always makes the client like eight out of 10 times to open it and view the proposal. So, but I was now wondering, um, the attachments that I make, for example, on my application, does the, can it, can it uh, lead to uh, upward ban? So like, if, for example, when you do a quick, a quick uh, sketch of the person's uh, job, just to, uh, just to see, to show the person what it can looks like, look like. Um, so far, so far, when you are putting the find attach, it's listed as find attach a sample of your work. Okay. It's okay. not it's not against the ban. Is what what is against the ban is or what gets you banned is when you are attaching something that has your contact details. And there, I think they have some other things that can let's say it's a Google Drive, for example, or a PDF that is fine attached. They expect that it not put your they expect even though some people can still put it there. So if those things don't get you flagged, 
Okay. Because you okay. are finding attach the sample and Upwork at least even Upwork is to say you attach sample. Yes. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So Rachel, have I answered all your questions? Um. Yes. Yes, I guess so. Yes. Don't guess so. Is it yes or no? Um. Seventy percent. So. Yes. If you guess so, you want to ask you. It means you have other questions, or you have things to ask again. If have I answered all your questions? If I've not answered all your questions, where is the confusion? Okay, okay, no, okay, you've not answered all. So, so how do I get start writing this proposal hooks and everything? So, and all my all my resources have everything. I have everything. I have read. Wait, wait. You need to calm down. Yeah, you need to calm down. Wait. Go and read how to make clients read your proposals, the Medium article I have. In yeah. that Medium article, I explained all these things I've, I pointed out to you. Go and read that. Go and read how to search for jobs like a pro. Okay. Wait, are you in FCM or not? The course, yes. Uh -huh. If you're in FCM, so go to your Upwork, go to Upwork Client Magnet. Go to, go and watch the videos on search again. Now, master search, because you will say you you know search, because trust me, let me tell you something. I mean, I, I mostly do have the time, or I most likely will not have the time. But if I sit down with you and check your search, I'll tell you, I will see what you are doing wrong, because I know you are doing something wrong. Like, I'm so 100% sure that you are doing something wrong. It can be in your search process, in your filters. You know, sometimes people will say they want to use other filters. So like it can be it can be the filters that you are doing wrong. Like I'm telling you from experience what I've noticed from a lot of people that will be like, I'm doing this thing right. I'm not getting jobs. Maybe when I get angry, I say, yeah, let me jump on with you and I will see it. And I'll start saying, so this is what you are doing right. So they'll be like, hey, I didn't know. So I know as I've been here plenty of times, your search should be less than five, five to 10. Now you can see why I like, I like less than five and five to 10. But even though you know, understand, I still does not mean, but at least for some clients who hire early, but just to give yourself a chance. Now, then it should be payment verified. Now, there are some payment on verified that works. I didn't want to teach you that because I don't want you to risk those things. I don't like teaching. Payment on verified works, but if you know how to do it, it only works majorly for experienced freelancers because you know what to do. If you notice, this job is a payment on verified job and you can see a lot of top rated people applied. It's yes. because when you are when you're an expert, you know how to deal with payment on verified. You know, so the idea is you guys are most times you guys are newbies. So I don't even want you to deal with maybe a newbie client or a client that can be fishy. But when you're an expert, you know what to do. Like you submitted a proposal, you know, if the client is start telling you, you know, you, before you do the job, you are telling them draw up a, con a contract. So the moment the client draw up that contract, the payments will become verified. So I've seen people like that that. I know a student, she has made like 30K from one client and the payment was unverified when they started working together. So that one happens. But I didn't, I don't like teaching it because it's a gray area and you guys might misinterpret my lesson. So that's why I, st I stick with payment verified. You know, so then go to your search, use categories, use keywords, then check the job activity, check the client details very well. I'll see some of you, you apply for jobs with three point something, you know, reviews or with higher rate of 10 percent 15 percent you'll be like ah but the job i can do it now all those factors they go and they they are very very important they are very very important because if you don't follow all those factors you will just realize that even when you have a good proposal that you are submitting you will still be finding it you will still be struggling um let me take like one more question and we'll just call it a day okay ah 15 new messages Thank you, sir. Messages are plenty. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I believe I believe um I've been able to answer most of your questions. Higher rate of what percent is ideal? It's it's uh when you see a low higher rate. When you see a low IR rate, then you check other things. Someone asked me that question. Let me ask, if I answer that question, I'll stop recording, then I can just be having fun. Now, someone asked me, so what IR rate should I now start applying for? You know, one of my skill of students, he now sent me a sample of an IR rate. The IR rate was about, is it 40 something percent? But the client had spent a lot of money. I said, apply. Because even though this IR rate is low, at least this client has spent plenty of money. So that should at least give you the opportunity to apply. Now, when it's too low, 
then you should, you know, be careful. But at least if it's high, it gives you a higher chance. If it's mid, it gives you okay. But when you start seeing the very low IR rates, then you use other things to justify why the IR rate is low or to justify why you don't need to apply for it. So yeah, that's the last one I want to answer. Let me just stop recording.